Hey everybody, welcome back. In this project video, we're gonna make a golf ball sleeve. I've got two of them here. This is just a little idea that I had a couple weeks ago. I'm trying to come up with something that wasn't just your typical saddle shop project, breast collar, head stall, um, you know, a binder, a bobble cover. Those things that we always kind of make as leather craftsmen that people uh, kind of know to come to us to kind of see if they can have something like that made. I was trying to think of something out of the box, and I know a lot of people like to play golf. I've got a lot of friends of mine that, um, cowboys included, that love to play golf, and a lot of them that are really Really good at it and so golf's kind of a uh, really popular thing I myself don't play any golf I've played a few times um, it's just uh, one I'm not real good at it and uh, two it's really hot and if I'm gonna be outside in the heat golf's not one of the events that I'm really kind of thinking about going and doing but I know a lot of people like golf and so I thought well what if we made just a little sleeve to hold uh, four uh, golf balls that will hang on the golf bag there and so we designed this. this is actually this one in the video that we're gonna make is actually the fifth one I've made I think I made three or four just trying to get the pattern really lined out it was trickier than I thought but now that the patterns done it's a very simple project to make but I got one completed that I really really liked and it looked just like this um, thought I was really got the pattern just the way I wanted it and everything I actually sent a picture to the uh, producer of our podcast uh, lost trade podcast if you haven't checked it out go to Apple or Spotify and check that out but um, I had sent him a picture. He likes to play golf. He's a big golf guy. And so I sent him and he said, man, that is really cool. He said, take it one step further and put a hole or a slot in the bottom where you can just squeeze a ball out. Um, as you need it without having to open the top up here. I thought that was a really neat idea So we kind of played with that and I made a kind of a, a wider slot so the ball slides out easily um, And it also holds them in there where they're not going to fall out of the bottom So once you get it'll hold four total and then when it's hanging on your golf bag with just this real simple little scissor snap You could use any snap you wanted to there Then you can if you need an extra ball you lose one in the lake or whatever you can grab one out of the bottom and go from there. So it's a really easy project. This whole thing is cut from one piece of leather as you're about to see. There's not a lot of uh, little extra things to do. They go together really fast. Honestly, once the tooling and die work is done, I think I put one of these together the other day in about 15 minutes, if that. That's included slicking edges and everything. But these go together really easily and they're a fun little project. So let's hop right into the video and make one of these golf ball sleeves. All right, so here we've got a piece of five, six ounce leather. I probably wouldn't make this much heavier than that. You could probably bump it up to about a seven, eight if you wanted to. It's just going to make it a little bit um, more firm, but I like that five, six ounce weight. You want to go ahead and cut the whole pattern out. If you do have the pattern pack, um, do not cut out the slots. Don't make any hole punches or anything like that. Don't cut that slot out yet. Just uh, cut the basic perimeter shape for now. All right, and if you're cutting this out by hand, um, if it's not die cut or anything, then you want to go ahead and where those points are right there at that angle. I go ahead and put a number, like say a number nine or a number 10 hole punch right there. You could even get away with a number four or five. But just punch a hole in that corner and then cut out from those holes. That's going to make a lot cleaner corner right there um, without a chance of overcutting, which would cause it to tear over time. So always punch a hole anytime you've got a tight corner there that you've got to cut out. All right, so here we're just gonna go ahead and take our blue painter's tape and go ahead and just put that on the back like we do anything else. We are gonna tool this one. If you're not tooling it, no reason to even take the time. If you're just doing a border stamp, you might not even do this with that. Um, but we're gonna do a full floral carving on here, so I don't want that leather to stretch out at all. All 
All right, and so here we're gonna go ahead and get the tooling started. Uh, we're just gonna show a little bit here of kind of me getting it drawn in there. The pattern pack does have 10 different tooling patterns, different floral patterns in there. Some of them have space in there if you wanna put a brand or initial on there, as well as some uh, geometric stamping and stuff. But this pattern here is available in the pattern pack as well. All right, so we're gonna do a two-tone dye job on this particular piece here. And I'm actually gonna use, instead of using my normal uh, dark brown or medium brown dye like I always use, I actually chose to use some cordovan on this one. And I'm kind of suspicious that my cordovan may be a little bad or old um, because it seemed really, really dark, but that just may be the natural color of the five beans cordovan, I'm not sure. I don't use that dye color a lot, but I do like it. But I did, I did like how this piece turned out. It had a really neat color to it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and antique this. We're just gonna take tan coat like I always do in my antiquing process and we're gonna put a coat on there. I've actually already put a coat on this, but we're gonna put a coat of tan coat on there and let it dry really good and then we'll do our antiquing. I do have a video on our complete antiquing process if you wanna go back and watch that.
All right, so we got it all antiqued. It's had time to dry. Now I want to go ahead and pull that blue painter's tape off. Always remember, especially on thinner leathers, when you're pulling the blue tape off, to hold the leather down and pull the tape. Don't pull the leather, because you can chance wrinkling the leather. So just hold it flat on the bench and pull the tape off. All right, so now we'll take our pattern and we want to remark that slot there at the bottom, um, that, that longer slot there. We want to go ahead and mark that again because during the antiquing process, even though you marked it when you traced it out, um, you can kind of lose sight of it. So I want a nice clear line. Now I'm just taking a half, a half round punch and that is a number nine hole punch that I ground half of it off and it just makes a... Uh, just kind of a little half moon cutter. And that is um, a really handy tool to have in the shop. You'll see me use that in a lot of our videos, but we'll make that uh, one of those punches on each end and we'll just take a blade and cut out in between the two. All right, so the first thing we're going to do now that that's cut is we're going to go ahead and edge that slot. This will make it nice and clean and professional looking, allow us to dye that inside. It's a really uh, wide slot there, so you want, you're going to be able to see that edge. So we've got room to make it slick and pretty and professional, so we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm using our number two Ron's edger here. So now we'll take and we'll edge the top. We're gonna to edge just a few key areas on here, one being the top of the uh, the opening there where the uh, golf balls actually get inserted into the case. And um, then we'll go ahead and edge right here at the bottom. This will be exposed, so we wanna edge that all the way and just go past your, uh, your slot there a little ways. And then before you're tooling a little bit for that flap. And we're just going to edge all of those areas right there and then um, get those slicked and dyed and ready for assembly. All right, I've given the edges a little time to dry there, and we're just gonna go back with our edge dye. I'm using the same color that we used for the two-tone job on here, which is the cordovan, five beans cordovan there. And we'll just dye all those edges and let those dry. All right, so here I've just got a piece of three, four ounce or four or five ounce. It's pretty firm, but I cut it in a three quarter inch strip. And then I just went ahead and dyed it as well so that it matches the rest of the little sleeve. And we're gonna cut that. I think I cut it about two and a half inches. That's in the pattern pack on the length, but I just cut a little tab. Gonna endpoint both ends of those. And this is gonna be the only other piece you need to make this entire project. The whole thing is one piece, except for this one little piece here. 
And this is going to hold the swivel snap on so that you can hook this to a bag or hang it from, uh, you know, your golf bag or something like that. So that's what this will be. It doesn't need to be heavy. It doesn't need to be really probably edged. I did not edge this piece. I just dyed the edges a little bit and then we'll mount that where it goes. Okay, so now we're going to put our pattern back on top of our sleeve that we're working on and we're going to go ahead and mark where our snap holes need to be as well as this three quarter inch bag slot here or oblong punch. That's going to be where that snap hanger is going to go. And then we're going to mac, uh, make a mark there. That's where one of our snap ends will be and then there on the front. If you go ahead and do this now, it's a much easier to do than after it's put together, obviously. Um, so we'll go ahead and mark that. All right, and so now we'll go ahead and set our snaps. I'm gonna use a line 20 snap. Um, you could definitely use a line 24. You could use a Sigma snap. You can use the same snaps used on your belts, whatever you prefer. I like these little 20 snaps, these line 20 snaps. They seem to be a little tougher, um, a little easier to use, especially since there's gonna be uh, golf balls in this little sleeve. Um, we're going to be setting the snap on top of an actual uh, golf ball in there so it should set fine but I just want a, a nice snap with some substance to it um, not something that's not going to hold very good we want to make sure that snaps nice and tight and so you can see we got that one there and then we'll set the male side on this end and go ahead and get that set All right, so there's our little snap hanger and there's the snap that we're gonna use. It's just an antique brass scissor snap that I got from Ohio Travel Bag. Now, when you set this in there, we're gonna run one end of it through the bag slot. The other end is gonna stay on the outside of the sleeve flap there. The reason for that is we're gonna use one double cap speed rivet on here, which is more than enough to hold this snap in place. If you wanna use a copper rivet, you certainly can. But with that, any kind of one rivet set like that, if we were to run it, um, if we run it the way it is right there where you put one inside and one outside, it keeps that snap one from pivoting left and right, but it also stabilizes that and keeps it nice and thin. So you're not gonna have a big bulk on the inside or on the outside of the uh, sleeve there. And it makes, makes it look nice and professional. So now we'll take our pattern and go ahead and flip the, the sleeve over and we're going to mark on the inside there. We're going to put some marks on where our glue goes um, on that long skinny piece there. And so we'll go ahead and mark those off and then we'll put glue on there and get ready to kind of get this thing put together so we can sew it.
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and run our stitch groove here. I groove when I stitch, so it's gonna look really nice right there. And that's the only place we really, we're gonna sew is just right on those two spots there on this thing. So go ahead and get those grooved and then we'll start putting glue on. As you can see, we're gonna put that glue we don't need a lot we just need enough to hold it together securely while we sew it and so I'm just going to use a little squeeze bottle applicator there and these little spreaders I really like these I've been using them a bunch and they're really handy on things like this where you really just want to conserve your glue and be real accurate on where it goes um, and you can see there we're just going to put that and that'll that'll be right where when we fold it in half where those line up So our glue has had a chance to get tacky and so now we'll go ahead and line this up start at the top and work your way towards the bottom it's gonna be much easier to line this up because you start getting in a little bit of a cramped area down there at the bottom but it'll go just got to be real careful with it so we'll thumb that down line that up as we go along work our way towards the bottom putting it um, and making sure those edges are nice and flush and then we'll kind of tap those lightly with a hammer make sure we've got them really secure Now I sewed this on my Cobra Class 4 with 207 thread um, and a size 23 needle. If you would like to sew this even probably on a little flat top machine um, or flatbed machine, you can probably sew that. This is very lightweight. Like I said, this whole thing is cut out of five ounce leather, which is more than enough for what we're building. And so you could definitely sew it on something like that as well. get all our little stitches cut here and then we will go ahead and do our sanding edging slicking and dyeing on just the sides right there because we've already done all of the all the edge work and all the dye work on all the other portions of this project so those sides are the only thing that we have to worry about now so we'll go ahead and get all of that done
as I do always, whenever my project is pretty well finished, I'll give it one last little wipe down with tan coat, really making sure that I get the edges nicely so that they shine. And then we'll freshen up everywhere um, all along the project that just kind of cleans it and gives it a nice little shine. I'm going to take a rub stick and I'm just going to tickle the edge there along where those stitches are just to get a nice crisp angle on that edge seam and that way that looks nice and professional and it lays down. I don't want it kicked up a little bit towards the golf balls or towards the center of the sleeve. We want to kind of get a good crease right there um, and that'll kind of make that backside lay a little flatter. Um, as you can see, we, we can load four golf balls from the top and you can easily grab one if you want from the top. As, um, and then we've got a swivel snap there, which you can attach that to a golf bag or wherever you would like. And then we've also got this slot on the bottom that allows you to extract a ball without having to really open the sleeve, which I thought was a neat feature. I don't play golf, but I would imagine if you lose one or you need an extra one you can grab one very easily off of this sleeve without having to fiddle with the snap or open it up or anything All right, so that's making one of our leather golf ball sleeves. As you can see, it went together really easily. There's not a lot to do here. If you're only hand sewing, if you don't have a sewing machine, this is another great project. You can hand sew these two sides very easily. Um, you could buck stitch them if you wanted to. I, I, I think from the front, you're not gonna see the buck stitching very much, so it's kind of hit or miss if you wanna take the time, but it'd probably be just as fast as hand sewing it. Um, they go together good. Like I said in the video, I made this out of a piece of five, six ounce leather. You could probably bump that to a seven or eight ounce and it'll still work fine. I would wouldn't go much heavier than that though. You want this thing to be pretty uh, light, lightweight, um, very easy to function. It's not bulky, it's not hard to deal with, and you can push a ball out of the bottom without having to really mar up the leather. That thinner leather will bend around and uh, can be manipulated a lot easier without getting a bunch of wrinkles in it and things like that. The only thing is you wanna be sure that leather is nice and firm. Don't cut this out of like the belly area where it's kind of mushy because then you, you do chance getting a lot more wrinkles down here if somebody uses it quite a bit. But yeah, it goes together really good. I've got another one here that was uh, kind of the first prototype with that slot in there and uh, just did it plain and even plain, it's just really classy looking. I think it's pretty. I think these will sell really well in your shop if you're going to a market day, something like that. If you, especially if you're doing a market days like just locally, a farmer's market or a little event or something like that, setting up a table, you are going to run into more people that play golf than you are that ride horses. And that's just kind of a, a demographic fact, right? There's just, there's more people that play golf than ride horses. And so um, if, as far as you can have your tack there and do all that, but it's always cool to have some things in your booth, even if you're at a roping, that maybe doesn't only pertain to horses and that'll kind of you know get get people thinking and it's just kind of a unique item i haven't seen one of these i kind of i've seen some different types some styles and things that they make but definitely not a whole lot of them that are floral tooled so i thought this would be a great project to uh to try there um, as far as the pattern pack, we do offer a pattern pack like we do on all of our project videos and uh, we've got it here. It is a large format print because as you saw in the video, the pattern is pretty large. It's about 19 and a half inches long. And so when you, you do that on, if I could have broke it up and put it on regular paper, but to me, that's just an extra step for you where you have to kind of piece that together and make sure you got it where you need it and all that. If you buy this one, if you're in the United States, please buy the printed pack. Um, it's just a lot easier. We'll mail it out to you. You don't have to worry about taking it somewhere and having it printed for you, and you know it's the right size. Then you can fold this out, make your templates, whatever you want to do. We might do an acrylic of this. We'll keep you posted on that if we do in the Monday videos, but currently right now, um, I'm really afraid if we do an acrylic, it might break. Unless we can do it in pieces, maybe that would work. We'll kind of go from there and figure that out. But I am, but we do have the pattern pack available, so it's got the cut patterns in there plus 
10 new floral tooling patterns for this. So there's 10 different variations of the floral pattern. This one is one of the ones that's in there. And then there's uh, nine other ones. Some of them have some space in there if you want to do some geometric work, stuff like that, add a brand or initials as usual in there. So I think it's a really good pattern. I think it's going to work really good in your shop, give you another product that you can make, especially around Christmas time. Uh, Christmas time, Father's Day, birthdays. This is the type of item here that, you know, I would sell one of these for, I haven't priced it out yet and I'll maybe try to do a little update on what I would actually price one of these but right off the top of my head I'm guessing probably a hundred and a quarter maybe hundred and fifty dollars for one of these maybe more than that uh, just depends on how much tooling how much time you put into the artwork because putting them together doesn't take any time at all and real quick back to the pattern we do also offer it in a digital version like we do on all our other patterns if you want to purchase that if you're outside of the United States you're more than welcome to purchase the digital version it's on there as well just remember, it's a large format print, so when you when you get the, the PDF file and you try to print it out, your printer might just stick the whole thing on one sheet of paper and it's not gonna be the right size. So you need to take it to a print shop, have them print it out for you. But if you're in the US, buy the printed pattern pack and we'll send it to you. We are gonna allow back orders on these for just a little bit to see, So because I don't wanna run out. Um, we're gonna keep, keep them coming from our printers. So we will put a note on the product description if they do hit the back order limit. If they do, we'll let you know that they're on back order, but you can still purchase your copy so you've got one coming when we get the next uh, inventory fulfillment on those. I did also have a die made for this pattern. So I have a die coming, it's not here yet, but when that die gets here, we will cut out material packs for this. That to me is a game changer on these because it, it almost takes longer to cut this thing out than it does to get it ready to sew. Um, just because you've got to cut this slot by hand, um, you know, these hole punches and slot it and a deal, but cutting it out as you saw me do it in the video, it can be a little tricky if you're not used to cutting out uh, certain items and things. So I went ahead and had a die made. It's going to put all the holes in it that you need. And so those will be there. All you'll have to do is just tool it up and then you can go to putting it together in no time. And you could make up a dozen of these easily and go to a, a market days or, or a little show or a roping or even a golf event and set up a bunch of these and sell them. I think they'll do well. Um, we're going to try to work on some more patterns going forward for things like that. Things like this little deal that are maybe a little bit out of the ordinary for a saddle shop just to expand our product line as craftsmen, some different, get into some different uh, things that, that we can offer customers that's not just your ordinary, you know, wallet and belt and that kind of thing, and uh, which always sells well for us, but let's create some more products like that, uh, like this, that, that we can kind of reach a few more people, get them interested in leather, because the more people that are working with leather, the more people that are coming into leather work, the better it is for all of us, and so I think it's a really good deal. So, but I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and there will be links down in the description for uh, both the pattern packs, uh, whether it's a digital or the printed version. So if you want to get a copy of that, you certainly can. And uh, be sure to go to dgsaddlery.com and sign up for the Leathercraft newsletter. And we'll see you guys in the next project video.